the final day of the G20 summit where guess what? The skies have opened up to pour with rain but showering plenty of goodwill after what many believe has been a landmark day one of the G20 summit in Mumbai. And only appropriately Rahul and Shiv, uh, all the guests will be taken on this final day to Rajkar and to they pay started, tribute. They, uh, sta to they started Mahatma really Gandhi. early as well, Rajdeep. Uh, Rishi Sunak and his wife, they just left from the Akshardham Mandir. They went there really, really early. We see all the cops in their raincoats outside the Akshardham Mandir. But they're on their way now to the Rajgat. That's where the scene shifts next. 8 a.m. on a Sunday morning. Rajdeep, Shiv and I are here. All charged up and raring to go. And a lot of the international commentary is talking about how the G20 summit signals the arrival of Prime Minister Narendra Modi as a leader on the global stage. So we'll talk a bit about that. As we take you through these first set of images coming live this morning from the Raj Ghat, uh, the memorial to Mahatma Gandhi, a black marble platform which marks the spot where Gandhiji was cremated on the 31st day of January 1948. Uh, this is Class North, chair of the Financial Stability Board, uh, coming into Raj Ghat this morning. He's been president of the Netherlands Bank before this, a uh, member of the governing council of the European Central Bank, uh, the FSB playing an important role along with the International Monetary Fund in determining the crypto regulations, Rajdeep, that will be looked at very carefully. I think the very fact that you've managed to <clears throat> achieve so much on day one, uh, I think that leaders go into day two with a quiet sense of satisfaction. That's Matsa Suko Asavaka, the president of the Asian Development Bank. As we've seen now, it's these international organizations that come in first. Uh, Masatugo Asakawa, uh, President of the ADB, Chairperson of the ADB's Board of Directors. Uh, coming in next is the Director General of the International Labour Organization, uh, Gilbert, uh, Gilbert uh, Fusini Hungbo. Uh, he's been with the ILO's governing body as the organization's 11th Director General, being welcomed uh, to Rajgarh now by Prime Minister Narendra Modi. This, as I said, is the FSB Chair, Class Nord. The FSB is an international body that monitors and makes recommendations about the international financial system. It's raining a bit. This is now the, Director General uh, of the, the IMF Monetary DG, Kristalina Georgieva. What is fascinating has been the choreography of, of, of the entire uh, G20 summit in terms of the photo ops. You've got it. You know, spot on. You got much more than the photo ops. No, 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 one minute, one minute. At the moment, at the moment, the manner in which. This but it's has always been like this, even in the last G20. Well, if you if you look at it in 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 terms of the ability of this government to have made this a spectacle, uh, you have to give them ninety nine out of hundred. But it's much more than a spectacle, right? No, no, we Come can on. discuss Maybe the much the more. Morning, no, no, one minute, one minute, one minute. We can discuss the much more later. Be. I'm talking about what we are seeing now. At the moment, no, but they're all coming the in one by one. Is, Where's the spectacle? The spectacle is the manner in which it's been choreographed. Look at the image that is there. You saw yesterday was the Konarak temple in the background. Today it is the classic Mahatma Gandhi image of uh, ashram-like structure, similar the to the Sabarmati structure that has been recreated here, so that you have the backdrop. I'm it's smart. It's it's showing it is extremely, how much thought I, I has thought, got into it instead of being so therefore, casual about it. They thought it through. That's exactly why I said it's a interesting spectacle, which effectively reflects the eye to detail. Sure. You see, the eye to detail has perhaps in the past never been there to the extent that we've seen it sure. on this particular this is G20 Antonio summit. Antonio Guattarez, uh, the ninth Secretary General of the United Nations, uh, took office in 2017. Uh, lots of questions being asked about the role and relevance of the United Nations. At the moment, he's coming in uh, to the Rajgad. It's <coughs> raining a bit. Uh, so that means A, there's no pollution, which is fantastic. B, it kind of takes a little bit away but the rain is just so much that it doesn't derail you completely, uh, so it's not so bad. Well, actually, it's good to have some rain. It brings down the temperatures. It is it is a relatively cool day. And if uh, you look at social media, it's also being seen as auspicious. That's a new right. Start a new G21. The city getting a, a nice bath. You know, everything. By the way, nice when new. when does G20 become G21 officially? Is probably, that already probably there? Later today, when the adoption of the declaration, I'm assuming. At some point, there will be a separate announcement. Now, Ajay Banga coming in, uh, the 14th president of the World Bank, began his term on uh, the 2nd of June, 2023. 
And before this served as Vice Chairman at General Atlantic, was President and CEO at MasterCard, uh, seen as a proud son of India. He, of course, knows uh, everything about the Sabarmati Ashram. The prime, he's telling the Prime Minister, I've been there. We can pick up some of the chatter. He says, I've been there. And he has his own story about being at the Sabarmati Ashram in Amber. Okay, so that's Dr. Tedros uh, Adhanim, uh, Director General he, of the World Health Organization. He seems to have, if there's one uh, leader who's visibly aged yeah. in the last couple of years, it's Dr. Tedros. Because if you saw him a couple of years ago, he was out there sprightly. He's obviously had the toughest, perhaps, job of any multilateral grouping in the last couple of years because of COVID. Was under a lot of criticism which WHO faced in the early part of COVID. But I think as time has gone on, WHO has, in its own way, managed to get its act together and is in perhaps a better place today than it was in 2020-21. Earlier this month, the WHO released the Gujarat Declaration, which was the WHO Traditional Medicine Global System uh, Summit 2023 where they looked at the role that tr uh, traditional medicine could play through the lens of science in trying to integrate traditional medicine with national health systems. Ayurveda, Yunani, that's a big focus uh, of uh, the Indian government, the WHO now, through the Gujarat Declaration as part of what's happening in the G20, also playing a role there. Uh, the Prime Minister is saying you've come in very early. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, we, you know, the good thing is we can pick up some... Little bit uh, of audio uh, yeah, only yeah. audio over here, we always use it. That's a lovely backdrop of the Sabarmati Ashram there. See, as I said there, it gives you the opportunity in a way to showcase India from antiquity, which is Konarak, to the... Nalanda? To Mahatma Gandhi, uh, to, to, to Gandhi's ashram. And you saw with the new Bharat Mandapam, it showcases new India. So in a sense, you would link antiquity. And Nalanda to last night also. That's right. So I think there's been a this conscious effort to show civilizational uh, heritage. This is uh, the Secretary it General of the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development, the OECD, uh, Matthias Hubert Paul uh, Common, uh, the Secretary General of the OECD. He came in in June 2021 for a five-year term. He's getting. Uh, you know, a uh, tour of the Sabarmati image that's at the back, uh, being told about it. Ajay Banga, of course, didn't need that, Rajdeep. He knew all about it. He's been the Australian uh, Federal uh, Minister before this, representing uh, the state of Western Australia. Now we have on our screen the Director General of the World Trade Organization, Nogozi Okonjo Aivela. The seventh DG of the World Trade Organization took office in March 21 first woman and the first African to serve as the Director General. What's come through very strong in this uh, G20 is the increasing role of Africa and India playing a role in acting as a bridge between the North and the South and helping bring Africa to the high table. In fact, one of the challenges will be for the WTO now because a number of the agreements that hopefully will be pitched forward uh, will be uh, the subject of intense scrutiny and debate at the WTO. There have been question marks, particularly that the Chinese uh, have raised and are being raised about the Chinese and their commitment to these trade agreements. So I think the WTO will play a major role. Okay, our uh, first guest this morning from the invitee countries, the head of state of Oman, Sultan Haitam bin Tariq, and ascended the throne in January 2020. He's come out early in the morning, the Sultan. Uh, a bit uncomfortable given the fact that it's raining just a bit. So obviously, Rajghat uh, also just a bit slippery as the head of state of uh, Oman walks in, a uh, member of the al Said dynasty that's ruled Oman since the 18th century and traditional trade linkages with the uh, Oman. Rashti. You see, the two, con uh, the two regions which I think have got an amplification which is very positive is Africa and West Asia. The agreement that was signed between India, the Middle East and Europe for an economic corridor I think is really actually historic along with the African Union entering the G20 and those slices of history are seeing the greater presence of, of West Asia and Africa at multilateral fora like this compared to when it started off in 2008 in the last 15 years. The big change 
has taken place with a greater push for integration with West Asia and significantly with the African Union. Sultan Haitham studied at Oxford University. He's working on a Oman Vision 2040. And then that's the other thing. All, if this, you look at all the, all the states of the, you know, the, the sort of pro, they are, have traditionally been straight jacketed as authoritarian and, and uh, inward looking. In the last decade, you are seeing more of, more of them from even Saudi Arabia to Oman to a UAE, which are increasingly seen as out, uh, outward looking and progressive. Uh, I, I really like this backdrop, you know, the fact that you are the Konark wheel for uh, good. Konark Finally, you are accepting that there is a there is no, space for, for, for choreography, the it's right not choreography. choreography. You know, it is it, well it, choreographed. It's an immersion in Indian culture. 